Welcome to the 2015 Chicago Auto Show with Darren Cox, director of Nismo Motorsports, and his latest toy. I do have to apologize because we have somewhat of a late start. Uh, this, this live streaming, Darren, it's, it's akin to finding that middle platform at Paddington to go out to Hogwarts. And this is actually, we're very excited because this is the first time we're doing it on the road. This is the first inside the Moto Man studio on the road, and it's with you. And I thought the technology in this car was complicated, but <laughs> technology just to get online this seems nothing, to be more man. complicated. So yeah. that means I can drive your car if I can get this working. Hmm. <laughs> See, this is an honest man. That's what I like about <laughs> this guy. Welcome to Chicago. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank it. you. It's great to be here, although yeah. I haven't seen much of Chicago. No, although I've seen the airport, I've seen a hotel, and I've seen the inside yeah. of this building. And while we were waiting for the tech stuff to be fixed, we, we've shared some jokes. Yes. Some of those uh, work on both sides of the Atlantic. They do. Um, and I think we're going to close out this stream at the end, and this is the preview for you to stay all the way through. We're going to have a joke off. We're gonna, well, you're going to tell <laughs> didn't. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and I thought we had technical <laughs> problems. <laughs> We've got not language that, issues yeah, as well. Yeah, not that there are sensors, but I guess Nissan's going to throw in some sensors here. Yeah, but who cares, you know? Yeah, exactly. Shiro loves you. Well, loves I, 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 I believe that your other job is a stand-up comedian. Uh, yes, but all of that is very blue, and okay. I, sh I shared some of those jokes with you. I think we would you offend most of your audience. Y your audience. This is your <laughs> audience, right? <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, they're here to see you, not me. Okay, cool. Okay, so I want to start from the top here, and I need to get right to it. This thing is awesome. I love the way this thing looks. Thank you. But you know the questions everybody's asking. The engine is here, which we don't have a problem with, mm. but the drive wheels are where? Here. Tell me... What was the decision process for you and Ben to get to the front wheel drive? And who's Ben? Just tell the audience who's so Ben. So, yeah, uh, Ben Bowlby's um, a very, very innovative uh, race car engineer and designer. That he's is an understatement of the year. Yeah. Um, he's done um, mundane stuff like NASCAR and IndyCar and Daytona 24 Hours. And yeah. most recently, he's, I guess he's famous for doing the Delta Wing project and the Zeod project, which yeah. are crazy looking cars. And um, when we were considering going back to Le Mans at the top class, uh, LMP1, uh, he was the obvious guy to, to design our cars and run our program for yeah. us. So, um, yeah, uh, he, he's, um, if you know you're racing, he's, for me, he's as good as Adrian Newey, just in a different field. And um, he's got a lot bushier eyebrows. So <laughs> um, we think he gets all his power from his eyebrows. So he's kind of like the Groucho Marx of the racing car world if he were living today. And without a moustache or uh, cigar, yeah. Yes, and actually has a soundtrack. <laughs> you can, he's in the talkies. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're digressing. Tell us about how you got, what was the decision process to move the drive wheels? Well, actually, someone's described this as a join-the-dots car. Um, and actually, it's very simple, even for a non-engineering guy like me, to explain why we've done what we've done. Y you know, and your viewers will know that, We've basically, as a sport, been trying to slow down our racing cars for 30 to 50 years. And how do you do that? You reduce the power of the engine, you reduce the tyre grip, um, or you reduce the aerodynamic capabilities of the designers. And um, in this championship and in most championships, a lot of focus of the um, regulations is around reducing the aerodynamic downforce of the rear of the car. Why is that? Because the weight's over the rear of the car. Um, and anyone that knows anything about race car design uh, and engineering, you have to have your center of gravity, in other words, your center of weight distribution, very similar to your center of pressure, in other words, your aerodynamic balance. So your weight balance has got to be very similar to your uh, aerodynamic balance. So if you've looked at the Audi, for example, who've been massively successful at Le Mans, mm. they've been moving their engine in their uh, prototypes from a rear engine position to a mid engine position effectively but of course behind the tub we call this bit in the middle yeah. the tub Porsche kind of did the same thing yeah exactly yeah. and then actually you know Porsche decided to use a different engine a V4 everyone scratched their heads why would they use a V4 two reasons one they could position the weight very low in the car and mm. very forward in the, in the car against the tub but also um, leave themselves weight for the hybrid system because the hybrid systems in these cars are also very important we'll come on to that I guess so if you had a blank sheet of paper and you know that re you're restricted on aerodynamics at the back of the car, and actually if you look at the back of the cars, the LMP cars, they're very similar mm. um, because the regulations are so tight, you try and move the weight forward. Well, if you've got a blank sheet of paper, how about moving the engine up to the front? And then once you've done that, and knowing that you've got a quite a strong weight um, limit and, uh, on the car, do you want a whacking great 
drive uh, um, uh, prop shaft going through the car, mm. a big diff on the back and some drive shafts out the back of the car. It compromises you. So then you start to think, can we get away with that and can we put the majority of our power through the front tyres? And then you start doing your simulations and you start looking at um, what the tyre capacity would be required and you start looking at uh, what traction control systems would be needed, the, you know, what power steering issues you might have with all that power going through the front wheels and torque issues catching I exactly connecting the wheels to the road exactly and you end up thinking do you know what we'll give this a go so has there has there simple, been simple eh? very simple mm. <laughs> sounds like you're more of a computer engineer you should be working on the live streaming than this someone needs to <laughs> um so was there a lot of attention paid to how you deal with torque up here with this one? Wh actually, what kind of power does this put out? So the internal combustion engine, so that the petrol bit, if you like, yeah. is putting out around 550 to 600 horsepower. Um, and that's cares, what, what's that doing? Well, it depends. Uh, within the regulations, within the category, you can have, um, which people are going to start getting used to this terminology, uh, two megajoules of um, power up to eight megajoules of power. And mm -hmm. the brilliance of the regulations are the more power you take in the hybrid side, the less fuel you get. So in other words, you can have a lot of power, eight megajoules of hybrid power, but that means you get less fuel, less liquid fuel, the if you like. of doubt, you, you can compete against someone in P1 that can opt for the different That's megajoules. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you can decide, okay, we, we think our hybrid system is very good. We're going to go for eight megajoules. We're going to have all that power. And for short bursts, that could be up to 1,000 horsepower um, going through it's incredible. whichever end of the car you're going through. So the CARES, it will only operate the front or will we send CARES back to the The rear? car's actually designed to do both. Um, and we're working on both at the moment. Um, quite well documented uh, online. Um, so Technically, it is an all-wheel drive car, then. It can be. It's been designed be. to be. Okay. It's been designed to be. At the moment, we're working on um, the curves being deployed through the front, but it's got the capability of deploying through the rear as well. And you're so going to test right. that? It's four-wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, we're testing it already. We, at, at this very moment, before we came on, um, I was on the phone to um, Ben Bowlby, and we were discussing how the test's going. He's going to run overnight tonight. Um, so, yeah, we're testing all the time. And, and you're doing that down in Florida now? That's correct, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, the CARE system itself... The CARE system. Um, where actually is it in the car? Well, the, the interesting thing about this car is the packaging. And um, again, we've done something different to everyone else. I've talked about it during the press conference. You know, motor racing has lost itself a little bit. And, you know, we're closing the doors to the fans, which is crazy. You know, fans want to be involved. They want to be tweeting with the drivers. They want to understand the, the, you know, the data in the car, they want to understand the design of the car, and what we do, so certainly in Formula One, and to a certain extent in, in the World Endurance Championship, uh, which is the championship that runs around Le Mans, is close the garage doors. We, we don't want the competitors to get information, which means that the fans don't get the information, mm. and fans are switching off to that. They want, you know, you watch soccer, you guys call it over here, I believe. Soccer, uh, is that the white ball with the... The ball? round, the yeah. round bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I've but seen something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but, but even your crazy uh, rugby where you have the hats on uh, <laughs> thing that you do, um, uh, people want statistics. They want to know how far... Uh, someone's run, they want to know how good the pass was, they want to know the possession percentage in uh, soccer. They want statistics, they want information that gives them an insight into the sport. And what we do is stop them doing that. So we've actually shown everyone this car, which, which everyone else is going, you're crazy. Uh, well why you've are you showing this cool schematic of it? Yeah, yeah the yeah. schematic, but also we had, you know, road and track came uh, um, uh, behind the scenes at, at um, uh, Cota. And everyone said when the um, uh, pictures came out, wow, they got all these spy shots. No, no, we just took the bodywork off and let them have the shots of the car. Top Gear, uh, I've been talking about the Kerr system. Um, we've told them everything about our Kerr system. You, you try and find out about the Audi um, hybrid system or the Porsche hybrid system or the aerodynamics like on the Toyota. Secrets. Exactly. And, yeah. and fans don't want that. You know, They want to be able to engage with the project. They want to engage with the drivers. They want to engage with the engineers. And that's what we're going to help do. So if you look online, it's very simple, the car. I shouldn't turn my back. By the way, this is we should have been sitting down, shouldn't we? This is much better with me You're standing You're the one up. that said not to no, sit no, down. No, no, I like it. I like it. Look. Okay. So basically, the front of the car, you've got a crash structure, which is this sort of nose sticking out the yes. front here, bolted to a gearbox. So the gearbox is roughly about here. Mm -hmm. Then there's the V6 engine. Um, thank here. you very much. Which Give is then space. obviously V6 mounted um, uh, that way. And then literally underneath the driver's feet and behind... The engine is the Kerr system, as you called it, which is a mechanical flywheel system. Mm. And very simply, you brake using that system. There's drive shafts. 
which as you're braking will then spin up a set of gears and clutches which will spin up a flywheel. The flywheel is 8 kilograms. Um, it spins up to 40,000 revolutions per minute um, and it's in a uh, vacuum and then it spins. And basically that is where you're storing your energy. So you're not storing it in a, in a battery or in a supercapacitor or, or uh, anywhere else. You're storing it in a, in a spinning flywheel. And when you need it, basically the clutches and the um, uh, gearbox g gears work in the reverse direction and fire the power out through the um, the drive shaft. I know that's different than the Porsche system. Is that different that's than the correct. Audi system? Uh, in fact, the um, uh, the Porsche LMP1 car is using uh, batteries. Yeah. Um, and so completely different. You know, literally storing like you'd have in the uh, globally best-selling electric vehicle, the Leaf. I. So <laughs> now we see I got a road the marketing car. side. I got, a, I got a road car quote in there for you. Just one. That's one. We're going to get to that road car over there. You guys can't see it, but it, it looks a lot like a Nismo Z, but it doesn't have a roof. But we'll get to that. Anyway. But it isn't a Nismo Z without a roof. It so it doesn't I guess just look we like just one. completely gave it away. So there we <laughs> Did I? <laughs> we're terrible at keeping secrets. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you are horrible at keeping secrets. Yeah, but that's... You but show that's everybody uh, your car naked. I know, it's ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? We, actually, I have no problem with that. Yeah, everyone gets very excited about it. And I think the, the shots of the car without the bodywork on when we were testing at yeah. Phoenix, everyone's got very excited about it, calling it a hot rod, calling it the Batmobile. And uh, everyone's just getting like excited about it. I've actually mm. had... We've got some people that follow us on Twitter. One of the guys, actually, he's based in... Um, Saudi Arabia, mm. he put a picture of this and he put a picture of the Batmobile right on top of each other. And you can totally see it. Mm. Now back to the, this, the, the carriage, I know I keep on hitting this thing. How do you connect it to the back wheels? So at the moment, as I say, it's um, firing through the front, um, but through the rear, there's a basically a very small prop shaft that goes to the back of the car, oh, so there is a, prop a, small, shaft. a small differential, um, and then drop gears into the, into the rear. Um, but because you're only using it very briefly, uh, but at obviously high, um, horsepower, um, it doesn't have. You don't have got, got a whacking great prop shaft. It's actually quite small. So, mm. um, as I say, at the moment, that's something that's designed into the car. We're mm. we're testing that, but I would imagine um, that um, that will be something that we'll bring on stream um, through the development of the car. Okay, okay. So we've covered the front wheel drive. Oh, and back to the front wheel drive a little bit. Have you done anything? You know how like um, in some of your the, the front wheel drive cars that you do, or even like. What I keep on going back to Porsche because that's their racing. and uh, They sent us one of those cars at the show, so let, that's why I know so much about that one. But um, like a stability management system to actively manage torque for a front-wheel drive car, like a Fiesta ST is mm. famous for that. Mm. Um, have you done anything here? Yeah, it's good. It's got, very, we think, very good traction control systems in there. There's some other crazy uh, electronics in there mm -hmm. that um, will, will become more obvious as, as we go forward. So we think we've got the, the, the traction uh, that everyone's worried about for us. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, we think we've got that under control. Um, okay. Obviously, the car and the drivers have got to drive the car differently. But um, yeah, we think that, you know, look at the size of the tyres on the front. We think we've got plenty of grip uh, coming out of the um, uh, of, of the corners, and it'll be helped by traction control. Mm. We've been running the car in the wet over the last couple of days, and it seems to be very, very stable in the wet. And the traction um, and acceleration seems to be very good as well. So... Uh, so would you have the same have advantage that a front-wheel drive car has in, in bad weather? They they say it always rains at Le Mans, and we're going to be doing we're going to be rain dancing uh, for our lives because if it rains, w yeah, normally front-wheel drive has a so that's why they hired a Brit to run Nismo. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wherever we go, there's always rain. <laughs> Okay, any other tech on this we, we want to know about? So much. You're going to have to talk to us again another time. I mean, you okay. know, uh, uh, the, the, the great thing about this, it's not just us. You know, I mentioned Formula 1, I mentioned NASCAR. You know, they're going down a specific route. Th this championship, you've got four big manufacturers, us, Toyota, Porsche, and Audi. All of us have got great heritage at Le Mans, not just now, but in the, in the past as well. Oh, yeah. Um, and... All four have gone with four different internal combustion engines. So you've got a V4 from Porsche, you've got a V8 from Toyota, you've got the diesel from Audi, mm. you've got us with a, a GTR-derived V6 twin-turbo 3-litre. But also, you've got four different Kerr systems. So you've got, if you like, if you took eight different options, everyone's covered them. You know, no one's copied anyone else on the batteries or on the supercapacitors or on the flywheels. So... Four big manufacturers with good heritage, with clever guys, all decided that the answer is different. Now, what can that do? That can only A, bring excitement, B, bring technology on in terms of hybridization, but also efficiency. Great statistic. Audi 
from 2013 to 2014 used 25% less fuel but went just as fast. That is what motorsport should be doing. Motorsport should be driving efficiency as well as speed. And, and the number from, I can't remember, it was six years, was something like 60% reduction in fuel used mm -hmm. but still going the same speed. And that's what this is going to do. Everyone's talking about the aerodynamics. Everyone's talking about the front-wheel drive. Honestly, the hidden gem of this car is that engine. Nismo and Nissan know how to do a V6, and we certainly know how to do a V6 twin-turbo. Mm. This engine's a star on this car. We think it's very powerful and very efficient, and uh, we think that's probably one of our big advantages. Do you feel... So, we th last night we talked a little about drifting and how I thought drifting, it grow there's such growth in it because the kids who watch it can do it. Like, I didn't get it when I first saw it. Now I love it. Why does... Is why do you get so much growth here? Why do you get so many people into into endurance racing? I think that's it. With all this different technology. Do you know? I think that you have two hundred and fifty thousand people go to Le Mans. You know, Le Mans is argue. You can argue between Daytona five hundred, Indy yeah. five hundred, uh, uh, Monaco, or Le Mans. For me, it's the biggest race in the world. It's for twenty four hours. If you look. Uh, there's been some surveys about the biggest um, sporting events in the world, and you know uh, Le Mans normally at the top of that um, as well. But then the other races around the championship aren't as big, and our job uh, is to show more people endurance racing, and you know that's what we did with the Super Bowl. That's why we bought the car to this show. That's why we we'll take the car to Geneva Auto Show. We'll take it to Basel Watch Fair with our very good friends at Tag Heuer. <laughs> Shameless, man. This guy. You are the I'm playing man. up I'm playing up to it. Come on. <laughs> um but you know <laughs> I want a free do watch know, for do that. You know what? I'm as I'm as slick as the motor oil in this car. <laughs> Come on, I'm playing with you and, now. And, I'm and playing with you. That was the joke we promised you. <laughs> <laughs> no, mine's, mine was more Tommy Cooper. Anyway, we need to we need to show more people about this fantastic racing. And um yeah. you know, we've got a six hour race in Austin, Texas. You know, there should be more people at that race than there is at the Formula One race. It's more exciting. You've got ex Formula One drivers like Mark Webber taking on ex gamers like Jan Mardebra and yeah. you know Sebastian Buemi and and you know these these guys that are, you know are in this championship, but they're racing for six hours. You know, you do a Grand Prix and then you've got another three or four Grand Prix after that. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the races going tonight. So endurance racing isn't as um, popular as it should be. You know, in America, to be quite honest, I think most people still think that Le Mans was won by Steve McQueen and that was <laughs> the last time it was run, right? So we no, need I to th bring I think it I think they're still on Hurley Haywood. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. I think yeah. they are. Yeah. Right, okay. yeah, yeah. Anybody else besides Hurley running these things? <laughs> But you know, who, yeah. uh, you know, uh, again, you know, maybe you can say go back to Dan Gurney as being, you know, the the big last big American hero to yeah. to win at Le Mans. And so we've got we've got to, as a group of manufacturers and 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 partners in the program, we've got to make Le Mans, you know, big again for not just the fans of motor racing, but as yeah. a as an event. You know, you you got events in the U.S., but I think about in Europe and and the U.K. events like, uh, you know, concerts that have become massive. You know, out, outdoor events. Um, uh, festivals, you know, Le Mans is a festival, and people could, should go to it as so part of the So you're saying it's going to be like electric music festivals at Le Mans? No. <laughs> no I mean, it, it, no. But what I'm saying is, people, it, it should be, you know, we we should first of all, we should take the spirit of Le Mans to the other races. Yeah. Um, and you know, people should, you know, enjoy that. Okay. Um, that that type of event, but not just the petrol heads like me and you. We should we should make it an event that people want to go to to experience a sporting event, not just the fact that it's motor I racing. I agree, man. Darren for president. Um, I'm going to switch gears on you a little bit. Now let's step back Nismo. I, I know what Nismo is. Give me a little history on Nismo. Yeah, uh, Nismo very simply is Nissan Motorsport. Mm -hmm. And uh, 30 years ago, um, almost exactly, uh, Nissan was doing various motorsport programs, but under the Nissan brand, and someone decided we're going to put all of those motorsport activities into uh, one organization called yeah. Nismo. And for 30 years, or at least 28 years of that, it was a very niche brand in Japan. It was Colt. Uh, it, you'd either know it because you were into tuning or you knew it because you were into gaming, mm. but it wasn't a mainstream brand. But it had this amazing heritage of winning races like the Daytona 24 Hours, winning IMSA championships, winning every other year in, in Japan, winning the Spa 24 Hours, mm. you know, uh, third at Le Mans, pole at Le Mans, um, but uh, never had road-going vehicles that you could sell to the public. So the public couldn't experience that Nismo spirit, if you like, that Nismo DNA. 
And in the last two or three years, we've bought um, across the world, specifically in Japan, Europe, and, and North America, uh, a number of products which we've got on the stage here and on the stand, whether it be the Z Nismo, the Duke Nismo, the, and of course the the big boy, uh, the um, the GTR Nismo, and, and more to come. So we, someone said it's like bringing race day to your everyday, and that's what it's about. They they're not just styling exercises; they are cars that have got different suspension, different differentials. They've got aerodynamics. The styling is not just for making styling yeah. safe, but by the way, it does look bloody good sitting there. Um, but also from an aerodynamics point of view, um, and also um, you know uh, a lot of, of changes to the um, the characteristics of the engine and, and slight increase in horsepower. But it's not a horsepower race. This is more about the overall package. So of you the don't want it to be like an AMG or an no. M, where it's no, like no. 600 horsepower. No. Well, there is a 600 horsepower, but that is mm. that is the the main yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I mean you know the, yeah. the the Duke you got sitting there is 220 horsepower, which is yeah. more than enough. For a front, um, I was going to say a front engine, front wheel drive <laughs> car. Then, mm. um, so, but so there's remember, the announcement. We're do you know have what? I just had a great idea. Well, P2? you know, we had we had. Um, remember the Duke car? Oh yeah, oh, which is which I drove it. It was, was wonderful. Did you? That was oh, yeah. my project. I did that. You uh, are a bit of a madman, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell anyone though, because I'll be fired. <laughs> um, but you know, why don't we put a drivetrain out of that into a Duke? And then, then the next day. You start ripping apart two cars and make one. Yeah. Yeah. Someone write that down. Yeah. Send me an email on that to someone. Have you what a good idea. Y you would be great for the aviation business. You ever hear the old saying, how do you make a million dollars in the in the aviation business? Start with two. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, okay. That brings up a really good point. So what is your actual role? Director of motorsport, but then we're talking about road cars. You actually have something to do with road yeah, cars. In, in uh, April last year, I was doing motorsport only for a year, full time. I was before that was a part time um, role, running the GT Academy, mm. doing some programs in Europe, and then um, for about eighteen months, I, I ran the, the global motorsport side of things, trying to make us more global, which we've which we've done. So not just having uh, racing in Japan and, and that being standalone and racing in Europe but bringing them together yeah. so we've got things like um, uh, our Japanese drivers now race in Europe and, and European drivers race in Japan uh, we have uh, links into the Australian uh, V8 program oh so congratulations man uh, for the Bathurst yes well that was almost that was forgot and else. all this technical garbage I completely forgot to congratulate no, you well, well I mean it, it was an amazing race and it was a great example of that global uh, teamwork we had Japanese engineers. We had um, uh, one of the team managers was a Brit. Um, we had a Japanese driver who won, of course, famously. Now, uh, go to Nismo.tv and see the final <laughs> yeah. two laps with your Tag Heuer watch, and make sure your car in the garage while you do this has Motul oil. Is that is that correct? And Michelin tires. <laughs> um, and um, but also we had a <laughs> we had a, a German uh, uh, GT Academy graduate and also a um, Belgium. GT Academy graduate, so it was a real global effort yeah. in Australia. And of course, the annoying thing was that V8s had their test weekend on the same weekend, so we couldn't have uh, Australian drivers in the car. But it worked out right in the end. So, so it um, is literally the Rainbow Coalition of racing. It's basically what exactly you, yeah, you know. That's what you are. That's what we're trying to do. But then, as, as you as as um, as I mentioned, um, you know, then I was given the opportunity to try and help uh, expand this brand into road cars um, and. Um, it is you know we've got a great product we've got mm. some great product guys i seem to be able to do a little bit of marketing with my team and yeah. you know we're selling a few cars and but the most important thing is it, we're not selling cars for selling cars sake we'll only do cars that people want you know we won't push the volume yeah. um, it's all about giving the enthusiasts um, the cars they want uh, in the right volumes so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a shameless plug of, m of, of mine really we, oh we dear. have to do it man we have okay, to go on then we just had now you guys can't see it but we th it's a red nismo 15 z which by the way the little changes you make, love it. Mm. The seats, the the front end, love that car. Um, by the way, you need to work on the clutch on that one. But I digress. What, the one that you had? The one I had, yeah. All right, yeah. Now, the, I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, no, come gotta on. You've got to work on that clutch. got to work on that clutch. But mm. I would like, as a representative of our audience, there are you guys who watch that have been great because they have a ton of feedback on that car. There's a lot of people who love the car, mm. a lot of people. But it would be good feedback for you. I'm going to send well, you that link. That well, I think the great thing is we're here in... Chicago, but this corner of Chicago is Nismo World, and to show how important the N Nissan North American market is and the customers that are out there, yeah. uh, we've got our president of Nismo, uh, Miyatani-san, is here, 
but just as important and probably more important from what you were just saying there. Is that why we can't tell the dirty jokes? Because your, pr- your boss yeah. is watching it? Yeah, that's what yeah. I figured. Uh, but the other guy that's here is um, Tamora San, who is the chief product specialist for Nismo. Yeah. And he's always very interested in feedback from customers. Yeah. He's here specifically to talk to customers uh, about what's going on. So let's point him in that direction of, okay. of the feedback. Okay, He'll be really interested to hear that. We will. And just a little overview here. You got So again, you guys, you can't see it, but it's the uh, Nismo Concept Z convertible. Correct. So effectively, one of those with a roof off. One of those with a roof. So it's the 350 horsepower, mm. the Recaro seats, the suspension tweaks. Anything yep. else different with that one besides the, from the just car the roof? Seat? Just the roof. So yeah. open air exhilaration drive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you know, and it's very much a a uh, an American sort of push for that. You know, um, it's not that sort of car wouldn't necessarily work in Europe. So it's very specifically for the North American I market. It, I find it fascinating. Like I look at that car, and you, you, you're familiar with the Corvette Z06. Mm, yeah, yeah. They've done a convertible version as mm. well. It's interesting the trend of mm. a car that, frankly, is a track car, mm. and you lop the roof off. Mm. What is it at that point? Mm. That always brings up anyway. Well, I think I think there's people that buy uh, that, well, there's people that buy performance cars for the performance, and yeah. there's people that buy performance cars for the look of the performance. And yeah. you know, there's no better example than the Mini Cooper. Yeah, at, at Cooper grade, sort of a car to drive. At, 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 at the Cooper grade, it's stickers and wheels. Yeah. And now I think the Cooper S works. By the way, fantastic car. Yeah. But I'm a. It's another story for another day. I'm I'm an old Mini fan. So. Um, oh, you I like I the smaller I one? The yeah, one. I try and okay, uh, I, I try and not that. call them the BMW half series. And that brings up a. <laughs> <laughs> that brings up a good point. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. I'll be here all week. Try the veal. Tip your wagers. Uh, how do you go? Now you're f- you grew up in London or outside of London, right? How do you go from a kid outside in of London in the mean streets of suburban London? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the tough, the, the hard scrabble exactly, streets. Exactly. Yeah, the pet shop boys yes. were singing about me when yes, they were singing yes, in the, suburbia. the company car that your father drove around, drove you around, and that kind of thing. Well, there's a story. I could do a whole series <laughs> of what my dad used to drive around. In. You need to. C- okay, I'm right now I'm putting the invite out. We're going to do a full inside the Moto Man studio, the full okay. two-hour deal. Get right. pictures of you with bad hair, the whole thing. Worse than this? This is the worst haircut oh I've no. ever had. We're gonna get the I'm ones where you had, like you cut a side in your hair and you had a hot hatch and you were trying to pick up like, you know, women from South London, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, how do you remember those days? No comment. <laughs> so how do you go from that guy to the guy who runs motorsport for a global multinational car company and and literally kind of reinvent race cars? How do you do that? Um, do the right thing for the company. The, you know, the company is about innovation that excites. So everything we do is about innovation, but trying to do the things differently. what was Like, what were the steps you took to get there? Um, so you grew yeah. up in London. You went to university. I attended university, yes. Yeah. Um, I believe. And uh, I, I always wanted to be in the motor industry. I worked in a motor spare shop when I was yeah. 13, sweeping the floor, making the tea, as you do. In those type of places, you know, having lots of pens in your top pocket, yeah. that sort of thing, knowing that a set of spark plugs for a Cortina were just there, and there we are, sir. So you were renting uh, on cars? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. And, um, and then I uh, started working at Renault mm-hmm. uh, and worked my way up from finance yeah. and uh, through to running London dealers. Uh, and then I was, I was uh, you know, thought I was a marketeer. So I moved to Nissan um, and worked on uh, Micra, which is this oh. small little car that we sell in Europe that we you guys that would car. think would be yeah, something car. for the, um, the, 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 the playground. And wrestled GTR and Z off of the poor guy that was then doing the marketing for those because I just kept telling him what to do. And he said in the end, he said, look, you I just do it. Because I can't, you know. And basically worked day and night on those. Um, and then moved to Nissan in Europe, uh, did various jobs, and basically always had an interest in the motorsport side. I, w- I did a bit of racing uh, when I was younger, and, and just tried to cajole people in positions of power to try and do more motor racing. Um, but you did more than that. There was a very interesting story about how a certain academy came to being. Yeah, well, part of, part of the uh, marketing 350Z not Z. You said that beautifully. I did. Nissan 350Z. You, you know you have American. earned your Chicago pizza today. That's very kind. Yeah. <laughs> I've just had one, actually. Yeah. It was actually, awful. it's really quiche. We just let them call it pizza <laughs> Is here. that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a lot of cheese on it. A lot, yeah. And um, much like this interview. <laughs> oh. 
So anyway, uh, when I was marketing the 350Z, um, we d we came up with an idea of doing a special edition, and we called the special edition the Gran Turismo 4, and we had an event where we got gamers along to that event. They weren't the best gamers, they were just gamers, came along to the event to try and win the car. And they drove 4x4s, and they drove Micras, and they drove Muranos, and at the end of the day they drove 350Zs, yeah. and the best driver was going to win a Z, and uh, it was this nice yellow Z, and... One of the instructors uh, said to me after, he says, a couple of these lads can really pedal. And that was it, the, the light bulb, hang on a minute, there must be some transferable skills between the game mm -hmm. and real life. And that was my 2% inspiration, and it's been 198% perspiration <laughs> ever since then to get it to where it's got to. So and I, I'm, a, I'm, a real I'm a real, you know, I'm really proud that we've announced our drivers for this lineup, having two of those guys that have come from that. And that was 10 years ago, almost to the day. It was April the 25th, 2005, that I came up with that idea. 2000, and how long did it take for you to actually... Three years. Three, and what, what was the process to get that three-year contract negotiation going between... Literally blood, blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. And uh, more tears than blood. Yeah, and was, wasn't there an Audi guy involved there? Somewhere? Yeah, they, we we went to PlayStation. They were very open and 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 were interested in it, um, uh, but it wasn't pushed along. It wasn't a priority of theirs. And this guy came from Audi, a guy called Mark Bowles. Yeah. Um, and he was uh, ex Audi marketeer. Turned up at PlayStation, and got it straight away. And basically pushed it through his organisation. I pushed it through mine. Yeah. We shook hands, and away we go. And then of course, Casanori, uh, the the famous. Um, uh, head and creator and genius of um, Gran Turismo fame from Polyphony um, started to get involved as well and then the rest is history I Who guess. Who can wheel? Yeah, he can. I mean he he's can. driven our cars a lot at the Nürburgring and um, got some good results there with GTRs yeah. and uh, yeah he's, he's a big fan of motorsport and saw this idea mm. and, and gave us our head as it were and yeah. let us have a go and Lucas O'Donnell is our first uh, winner did a fantastic job in the first race yeah. that was supposed to be it but he did such a good job, we begged, borrowed and stole um, to get him to do a season of racing. He helped the team win the GT4 championship, the real GT4 championship in Europe. Um, and then he came second in the driver's championship. And that proved the point. And then we had a year off, actually, GT Academy, because it wasn't planned to do it. Yeah. And the following year and every year since, we've done that program in Europe. And then it so expanded to seven the US. years now. Yeah, it w it'll be the seventh year this year, yeah. Okay. Now, we promised before we started that we'd end this with you telling people jokes. I'm not sure we said that, did we? You did we, we said did. there would be jokes. There would be jokes. Well, there yeah. were some bad jokes along the way. We yeah, want yeah, a good yeah. I am Darren. Oh, by the way, you can follow this guy on Twitter. What, what's your Twitter handle? I am Darren Cox. I am Darren it? Cox. Okay. Yes, very yeah. he's a very manager. So tell us the joke <laughs> before we say goodbye. Like, but uh, seeing as I'm English, uh, you probably noticed that I'm from England. Um, it's it's got to be a, an English joke. It's not really a joke. It's Tommy Cooper. Well, it's you've a lived so in it's England. It's a one-liner. Yes, it's a one-liner. Yeah, king of the one-liner. One one? Tommy Cooper Cooper's king of the like yeah. uh, some of our like, yeah. Go ahead. You, you, you give me one first. I'm trying oh, to think of the no, my no, best. No, no, we will get thrown out of here by security. I promise <laughs> you. I I'm, I've now gone blank on my joke telling. Oh, come on, take my wife, you're, please. You're <laughs> Okay, I do, shall, I do the Tommy, shall I do, do the Tommy, Tommy Cooper, Cooper one, yeah. do, uh, Shall I do the Tommy Cooper voice, though? This is the question. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, in fact, I'll tell the one I was going to tell you, and I messed up. Let's see if I can get it right the okay, second time. let's do it. I went to the doctors. I said, Doctor, one day I feel like a teepee, and the next day I feel like a wigwam. He said, you're too tense. On that note, we're going to say goodbye to Darren Cox, thank you very much for sharing this with us. It's been a pleasure. So thank you for sharing the tech on the car. We are definitely going to have this man back. We're going to do the full Inside the Motor Man studio with you. We Hopefully should do it just before Le Mans. I, I think that's a fantastic idea. And we got to bring Jan up. Um, where is Jan? He's over there. He's over there. You know, he's, he's just a, been announced as a Le Mans driver. He's, he's like surrounded he's by like women. He's like 10 years old. And yeah. It was a super attractive Asian woman working the She's standing booth. over there. Oh, there she is. No, <laughs> no. Not that her. one. I'm sorry, but you are super attractive. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Uh, and she was complete. She was working him. I know. I want to be a race car driver. <laughs> On that note, we are going to say goodbye to Mr. Cox because he needs to go test this race car down in Florida. Um, we are going to see you guys. Join us tomorrow, uh, same time. Hopefully, this works on the road like, uh, better than it did today. We will see you at uh, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. East, and 11 a.m. Uh, West Coast, where I'm going to answer your questions. Questions about cars from the show here. Questions about 
the other jokes this man told me, uh, as well as any other questions you may have about the show behind the scenes. We'll see you guys tomorrow, and make sure you follow us via all our social media, Motoman TV, all one word, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you very much for joining us, and Darren here with his cool car. Thank you very much. And, uh, seriously, man, an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. We'll see you guys tomorrow.